Do you know what? asked Percy. What? grunted Gordon. Do you know what? Silly, said Gordon crossly. Of course I don't know what, if you don't tell me what what is. The fat controller says that the work in the yard is too heavy for me. He's getting a bigger engine to help me. Rubbish, put in James. Any engine could do it, he went on grandly. If you worked more and chattered less, this yard would be a sweeter, a better and a happier place. Percy went off to fetch some coaches. That stupid old signal, he thought. No one listens to me now. They think I'm a silly little engine and order me about. I'll show them. I'll show them, he puffed as he ran about the yard. But he didn't know how. Things went wrong. The coaches and trucks behaved badly. And by the end of the afternoon, he felt tired and unhappy. He brought some coaches to the station and stood panting at the end of the platform. Hello, Percy, said the fat controller. You look tired. Yes, sir, I am, sir. I don't know if I'm standing on my dome or my wheels. You look the right way up to me, laughed the fat controller. Cheer up. The new engine is bigger than you and can probably do the work alone. Would you like to help build my new harbour at Thomas's Junction? Thomas and Toby will help, but I need an engine there all the time. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said Percy happily. The new engine arrived next morning. What is your name? asked the fat controller kindly. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good, said the fat controller. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, come and show Duck round. The two engines went off together. At first, the trucks played tricks, but soon found that playing tricks on Duck was a mistake. The coaches behaved well, though James, Gordon and Henry did not. They watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine, they whispered. We'll have some fun. They wheezed as they passed him. Percy was cross, but Duck took no notice. They'll get tired of it soon, he said. Presently, the three engines began to order Duck about. Duck stopped. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? he asked. Yes, they do, answered Percy sadly. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it tonight. The fat controller had had a good day. There had been no grumbling passengers. All the trains had run to time, and Duck had worked well in the yard. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. He had just left the office when he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Henry, Gordon and James were wheeshing and snorting furiously, while Duck and Percy 
calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Stop that noise, he bellowed. Now, Gordon. They won't let us in, hissed the big engine crossly. Jock, explain this behaviour. Beg pardon, sir, but I'm a Great Western engine. We Great Western engines do our work without fuss, but we are not ordered about by other engines. You, sir, are our controller. We will, of course, move if you order us, but begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these, uh, engines that we only take orders from you. <laughs> Snap the fat controller. Percy and Doc, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behaviour tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. They stopped suddenly when the fat controller turned on them. As for you, he thundered, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Doc is quite right. This is my railway and I give the orders. When Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so. Easily.